So with your now growing team, how many people did you say report to you or somehow report to you? Yeah, yeah. So the Gusto design team, which um, is inclusive of research and content design as well as mm-hmm. product design, um, is about 55 people right now. And we're growing quite a bit this year. So we'll probably be around 75 or 80 by the end of the year if we're successful in hiring. Right. <laughs> um, and yeah, lots of opportunity. And does that include research as well as research? It does. Gusto- okay. Yeah. In fact, right now I'm hiring a head of research Ooh, uh, okay. to report to me. So building my my leadership team there in, in research. So, okay. Let's imagine someone has found a role that they're interested in and it aligns with their values, which is great. And they've applied and you're the hiring manager. You're working with the hiring manager. Let's think about what is your process? What goes through your head? What are you looking for when you as the hiring people are faced with that step of vetting all of these Mm. candidates? Like, what does that look like? What makes candidates stand out? Because I know everyone, if they could feed me questions right now, they're thinking like, how do we stand out? How do we, you know, make it to that first round of interviews and get in that pipeline, if you will? Yeah. So, I mean, so when I'm going through applications, you know, you're going through a lot of applications um, and you're, you know, you're going through a lot of like LinkedIn profiles. This is going to sound really obvious, but like make sure your LinkedIn profile is up to date. Um, Make sure you explicitly say why you think this is the right role for you and personalize it. Like I would say less than 10% of the time does an application come in with a cover letter. Hmm. And I, I may be old fashioned. <laughs> um, I've been in this industry a while, but I pay attention to cover letters. I pay attention to like the storytelling around why this role is for you. Because in the absence of that storytelling, all I have to go on are the facts, like the bare facts that you happen to have listed in your CV. Um, and when I look at those facts, if I can't see really clearly why this role makes sense for you, then I'm probably going to move to reject before we even talk. Right. Um, and so a cover letter that is personalized that really looks at the company, um, the, the sort of the things that we're looking for and that personalizes the opportunity to why it makes sense for you really, really stands out because not many people do it anymore. Like right. I rarely do it. Even for like senior leadership roles, like I'm hiring for a head of research right now. And like maybe one out of every 10 mm-hmm. applications has a cover letter on it. Right. Okay. I'm so glad you said this. I make this point where the bar to stand out is actually pretty low. Like candidates think it's such a competitive market and there's not enough roles for me, no matter what level I'm at. And like, I'm almost kind of tired of hearing of all the excuses as to why it's so hard, because I want to tell them, exactly what you said. The bar is so low. And if you just put a little bit extra effort into writing the cover letter, for example, and I think what you're describing with the cover letter, it's like you're wishing candidates would connect the dots for you because you're busy. You don't want to have to read this and think about that. Just connect the dots for you in the cover letter. And that's going to save you a lot of time and show you their storytelling and connect the dot skills, right? Uh, Absolutely. I think, you know, you have to put yourself in the shoes of somebody who's hiring and, you know, they're probably going through dozens, dozens and dozens and dozens of of applications. A lot of those applications are from people who have none of the skills required for the role. Um, And it's, and (laughs) you're just like, it, it becomes a real slog. Um, And so it is a real delight, actually, to get an application Mm -hmm. where somebody has has just put a little bit of effort in and has really thought about the role in the organization and what they could bring to it. Um, And I should also say, those types of um, applications stand out even when the person is missing a lot of the skills that are listed in the job listing. Like the, the job listing is... It's, it's sort of like, think of them as guardrails. You know, you don't have to check every single box there. In fact, like I would really encourage people if they are excited about an opportunity and they meet even some of those requirements, apply, but then take extra care in your application mm-hmm. and framing why that opportunity resonates for you and what you think you could bring to it. And is that because 
Um, I love the word guardrail and that, that analogy of that job description, because I think so many people, I know the people watching their minds are just swirling right now because they believe the job description is a must have list. And so they don't apply to roles. And I tell them many times exactly what you said, but I, th I think it goes to the heart of the idea of you guys are really hiring for the person. And if you can see the qualities that would allow them to quickly learn or be open to, you know, developing new skills, maybe that's going to stand out versus someone that just, you know, knows every software listed or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, software can be learned. Like that that is something you can yes. learn. Yes. Um and if you're, you know, you're hiring somebody to join your team, you're going to be willing to make an investment in them to fill some of the gaps that they have. Right. It is those things that are harder um to learn, like harder to teach that you're kind of looking for. So, you know, for me again, it's like it's like connection to our mission. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it is care for, I think, businesses and, and a really human-centered approach. Um, and then I think it's also just in like how you frame your previous experience and how you think of that as a good, um, almost like stepping stone into the role that you're applying for. Mm -hmm. Because most people, you know, are looking, they're not just looking to move laterally. I mean, some people are, you know, some people are just excited to like change spaces. They've maybe been in a company for a long time. They're looking for a different kind of, um, you know, uh, lateral opportunity. Right. Um, but most people are actually looking to take a little bit of a step forward. Like they're looking for something different. I've never been a chief design officer before my role at Gusto. Um, and so, you know, if, if Gusto's job description said, you know, must be, a, must have experience as a chief design officer, I mean, that would not have been me, right. um, you know, so it becomes a matter of looking at the job description, looking at the company, um, and then thinking about how that really matches up to what you think you can do and also what you want to learn and how right. you want to grow. And I think stating that is really important as well. Um, one of the things that I talked a lot about in my interview was, you know, I led a really big team at, at Shopify. It was about 130 people. I've also worked on really small teams. But I've actually never taken a team in that like 50 to 100 range, which is a really challenging phase for a team um, because it is kind of the point where people cannot all know each other personally. It's the point where all of those rituals that you establish when you're a tiny team break down and stop working. Um, and it requires a lot of intentionality if you mm -hmm. want to kind of maintain um, a healthy, connected culture. And I've actually never done that phase before. Um, and I was really honest about that and, and also honest about the fact that that was one of the reasons that I wanted this role. Even though my team size now is a lot smaller than it was at Shopify, um, I was really excited by the challenge of figuring out how to scale a team intentionally, um, applying all of the lessons that I learned at Shopify as I looked at my team of 130 and it was like a huge tanker and I couldn't turn, right. you, know, you can't turn the ship on a huge tanker. Yeah. But when you're in a little nimble boat, you know, you can still turn the, the wheel and really change the direction. So, um, so I think that's another piece of it is, you know, you don't have to match all of the requirements of the role or what the company is asking for, but you have to have a good story, I think, for, um, you know, why you're applying and why you're excited about the role and for how you want to grow into it if you're if you're missing some of those checkboxes. Right. 